It's so different from what we normally do. Normally, we're, we're, we're on the move constantly, right? You know, your game, flight, city, hotel, check-in, game, everything's moving at a thousand miles an hour. And so there isn't that closeness a lot of times just because we're all in motion. We were kind of all together and stagnant. Just a, such a different feel. We went to work. We tried to create a great atmosphere of professionalism, of habits, of culture, of trying to prepare to, to be as good as we could be. We a cool ass organization, but some of y'all have been to other organizations and they don't give a about winning, they don't give a about their players, about getting them better. This organization gives a about that. You know, I think everybody should be proud of the league and, and of our team and of players just for continuing and finding a way to get this done in a safe way. And, and again, doing it at a high level, right? No matter the circumstances, going out there and being professional and doing it at a high level. There is renewed anger in the U.S. tonight over racial injustice. Disturbing video shows Jacob Blake, a black father of three, shot by police in Wisconsin almost three months to the day of George Floyd's killing. For every single person campaigning that Black Lives Matter, this latest shooting is like the last straw. Even the Raptors, unable to influence social change from the NBA bubble, are fed up. Frustrated, players with the Toronto Raptors say taking a knee in protest isn't getting the job done. They're considering a boycott. To be honest, man, I, um, I mean, I've been sitting trying to think about what I was going to say to you guys and uh, the way I go about this, but um, I'm, I'm frustrated. Honestly, um, I'm disappointed. I mean, I have a wide range of emotions right now with everything that's going on in um, today's world and what we keep seeing over and over again. Um, I'm pretty tired and sick to my stomach to have to sit up here and talk about this again and continue this long fight that we've been fighting um, since day one, you know, of since slavery. Um, being brought over to America and having to fight for our rights and our freedom to live a life that is promised to, to everybody. It just it starts to become a rhythm of uh, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. Somebody gets killed for no reason. Protest, 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 and rinse and repeat. And that's just what it feels like. So it's very draining, very unfortunate. I'm um, praying for all these people and, and their families and and what they're going through. At what point does it, do we not have to speak about it anymore? Like, are we gonna hold everybody accountable or we're just gonna put the spotlight on black people or black athletes or entertainers and say, what are you doing? What are you contributing to your community? What are you putting on the line? And then us too, we gotta take responsibility as well. Like, what are we willing to give up? Do we actually give up about what's going on? Or does it, is it just cool to, where, you know, Black Lives Matter on, on the backdrop or wear a t-shirt, like, what does that really mean? Is it really doing anything? I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that have been being talked about and, and how to approach these, this, this sensitive issue, um, you know, and I think everybody's at the point of sitting up and saying Black Lives Matter and sitting up and having these discussions and Zoom calls and this, that, and the other and putting apparel on and like that, that's not getting the job done. Taking a knee for the anthem, that's not getting the job done. You know, that's it's starting to get 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 washed out. I feel like Black Lives Matter is just another thing in conversation now. You know, until you put the pressure on on the ones involved, you know, and, and, and their names and, and and their jobs are on the line, it doesn't it doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter what or uh, what what you guys put up for, for, for articles and things like that. Until you guys are knocking on the doors and we're knocking on the doors of saying where do you stand and and, and, and making them draw the line of, of where they're at. Nothing's gonna happen. Welcome to Bucks Basketball. Jim Paschke, Marcus Johnson, Zora Stevenson. We have breaking news from Walt Disney World in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. 
The Orlando Magic took the court before what is to be game five this afternoon. The Milwaukee Bucks did not. We are told that the Bucks are in serious discussion about perhaps not playing in game five today. A closeout game against the Orlando Magic. And if the Bucks, as a team, have decided not to play in game five of the playoffs, the whole purpose or big purpose of the restart in the bubble in Orlando is to bring attention and focus to social injustice and also police abuse and brutality. You know, what does this mean for the NBA? What does this mean for Milwaukee? What does this mean for Kenosha? Um, you know, what does this mean for Jacob Blake? Like, then those thoughts start going through your head. And so I think that game happened at one o'clock. And uh, so Kyle texted everybody and said, let's meet as a team at six. And so I think we all had a couple hours to kind of gather our thoughts, talk to some people, and um, obviously go down and, you know, first and foremost, we wanted to listen to the guys and what they had to say, um, offer our perspective, offer our guidance. Um, but most importantly, I think Kyle's message at that time was, let's walk out of here um, as a unified group. Um, let's have all discussions now, but when, when we do walk out of here, let's, let's know who the Toronto Raptors are, what our decision is, um, what we stand for. Obviously, we had a meeting that night with the entire, uh, all the players that were in the bubble, got in a huge room. It was, it was a big room. Everybody was socially distanced, uh, spread out all over the place, talking about the situations and, and what was going to be done. Then the next day, there was kind of a smaller, smaller meeting with two representatives of each team, a handful of GMs, a handful of coaches, um, and then the owners were on Zoom. So just, you know, just I thought some very thoughtful discussion and very, um, you know, there was there was pretty good uh, teamwork, to be, to be honest with you, between the coaches, the GMs, the players, the owners, to, to, you know, come to some resolutions and get back out on the floor and keep playing. However, making a, a even stronger commitment um, across the board to continue the, uh, you know, the message. The NBA and its players have agreed to immediately establish a social justice coalition with representatives from players, coaches, and governors that will be focused on a broad range of issues, including increasing access to voting, promoting civic engagement, and advocating for meaningful police and criminal justice reform. In every city where the league franchise owns and controls the arena property, team governors will continue to work with local elections officials to convert the facility into a voting location for the 2020 general election to allow for a safe in-person voting option for communities vulnerable to COVID. You know, as a black American, as a black man, you know, it gets tiring when you're thinking about all we're asking for, all the players are demanding, is that equal treatment, fair treatment, to be included in this great society of ours. That's it. And I knew that these feelings was gonna occur because you can tell once the game started, all the conversation was about the magnificent play on the court, not about anything that was going outside of that bubble. And the players feel isolated, they feel despair, they feel powerless, and I think not playing in the middle of the playoffs reinvigorated them, gave them their sense of purpose back, gave them their power back. And I think now they've got our attention again because they have proven and they have shown that they will not play basketball if they don't feel like the conversation is continually going forward or they start seeing some significant changes. The NBA playoffs continue. The games continue. It's the restart after the restart. Unprecedented. Boycott, walkout, whatever you may want to call it. 
Raptors were supposed to start the playoffs four days ago, but they will start after that delay today against the Boston Celtics. First time they ever meet the Celtics in the playoffs. Boston takes game one of a best of seven series. 112 to 94. Picked up by Pascal. Van Vliet for the tie. Doesn't go. Boston takes game two, 102 99. Hello, Canada. Game three, Eastern Conference semifinals. Trouble in the bubble for the Toronto Raptors. Down two to the Boston Celtics. Really should be a 1-1 series. Raptors blew it in the fourth quarter the other night. Need a much better concentrated effort for 48 tonight. And the last time the Raptors were down 0-2 against the team that wore green and black and white. Oh, the Milwaukee Bucks last year and they won four straight. So it is possible. Not going there, down four. Time left. Gasol sets a screen. Kyle and Lowry once again makes it a one possession game. He's got 31 points. Shot clock under 10. Fred driving left. Good tied. Under 10 seconds left in game three, tied 101-101. Kemba Walker with 29. Walker underneath, ties, what a play. Wow. Lowry, Van Vliet, Gasol, Siakam, and Ananobi. Point five to go in game three. OG with a look. It was like, yeah, uh, like I was excited. Everyone was excited for me, so it was cool. Uh, yeah, someone hit me in the nose. But, <laughs> so I was kind of mad about that, but it's cool. Oh, gee! Oh, my! And the Raptors! An improbable game winner! Take game three! So I'm, I had to wait, wait, wait. Jalen, once Mark flashed middle, I just said I waited and literally looked at Mark and he stood over top. Yes. I looked at Mark. That's why Jalen stepped in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Kyle. Oh yes, Get them now. Let's go. Yes, yes, sir. Don't give us no light. Yes, sir. Don't give us no light. He said that. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. Get them now. Watch him. Big one. Hey, man, we deserve it. Put your ass off. You deserve it. Yeah, right. All time. Yes, Play sir. it right here in the middle. Yes, sir. Come on. Okay. Come on. Raps, one, two, three. Raps. Raps. Yeah. 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 
A Saturday night from Central Florida. Game four, the Toronto Raptors, the reigning NBA champion Raptors, getting set to take on the Boston Celtics. Grant Williams on him. Raptors up seven. Kyle, a little bit of separation, and the three is good. Boston knows that the Raptors are going to take game four. Fred Van Vliet. He said it after game three. All we needed was one to get the juice back in a little magic. The Raptors have game four in the series is tied at two games apiece. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, we'll give you that one. And are there any highlights or is it just... Yeah, no, we'll give you highlights too. Okay, thanks. You know, look, it's very different from being courtside, uh, but given the situation that uh, we're all in, uh, we're all making adjustments uh, to make sure that we're all safe and we're all healthy. And so you understand it and you make the best of the situation. All right, Rod, it's been interesting to know that when you go back and look at each game, the team that has won the three-point shooting contest has come away with the victory. Now, game three, Raptors are able to get out and run. It wasn't there in game four. Can that happen tonight in game five, as well as the three ball? We'll soon find out. Gasol attacking, and Gasol unable to finish. Tice does with the slam dunk. And stripped of the basketball, last touch by Toronto. Timeout on the floor, Boston up by six. Boston's hit first. They're more physical, they're more aggressive. You knew they were going to come out with urgency, and the Raptors have not responded. Games there you go, Norm gets to the rim, but Tice the recovery. Brown throws it down. Nick Nurse needs a timeout here. They just 9 0 run for the Celtics, and this is not the start for Toronto that they wanted whatsoever. And it's all Boston. Well, they're just in, in a flow right now and really scoring off their defense. And the Raptors just look like they're completely out of gas here right now. And that's going to do it. And the Boston Celtics are going to take game five, 111 89. And Nick Nurse letting Kane Fitzgerald know exactly what he thought about the officiating tonight. The Raptors now trail in this best of seven series, three games to two. Well, the season's on the line Wednesday night against the Celtics. We've talked enough about this game, Matt. Quite frankly, I really don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs>
for the lead. Got it. Calm, cool, collected. OG. Marcus Smart to Tatum. Tatum off the bounce, stripped by Powell. Powell with one man to beat. Drives into Smart. Count it and the foul. Norman Powell banks it home and a chance for a three point play. You gotta, if you're the Celtics, you gotta tell him there's no help sending him to his right. Send him middle and get help. Lowry falling away. Got it. Kyle Lowry drills the jumper and it's back to a four point lead. What a spectacular performance from the leader of the Raptors. He's got 33. And that'll do it. It's all over. The Raptors win. And their season is still alive. There will be a game seven fittingly in this series. <laughs> I'm not afraid of that. I'm too tired to move. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Oh, the job. Let's go. Yeah. We got, we're, we're fighting. Like I said, a lot of basketball left to be played. A lot of guys play good tonight, man. A lot of guys play good tonight. Let's go. Raps. One, two, three, raps. Jacked, I'm pumped. <laughs> oh. Goosebumps. Goosebumps from the Magic Kingdom, the two most magical words in sports. Game seven. There's a new ride in Disney World. It's called the Raptor. It's up and down and all around, and here we go. Game seven, Celtics, Raptors. We talked about it being a long series. It has lived up to the billing. How about the long game in game six? Hello, Canada. It should be an exciting game. We're going to see. I mean, uh, we expected a long series. That's what we have. Raptors were down two games to begin this series. They bounced back. They've had drama. They've had emotion. They've had two overtimes. Guys, game seven. Let's send you to the bubble. All right. Let's go have fun, baby. Yes, sir. 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 Here is tonight, Jack, where the Toronto Raptors, the reigning NBA champions, with Kyle Lowry leading the way, are in this Game 7 against the Boston Celtics. Hey, man. Game 7. All about us. This is what we do. This is what we work for. Yes, sir. We're going to do it together. All work together. Coming from each other. It's not about you. We do it yourself. It's about the team. Yep. Let's go ahead and do our jobs. One on three. One, two, three. Woo! Both teams, heavy minutes with their starters, spinning Lowry, drains the three from Kingston. Norman Powell able to grab it in the runners by Tatum right here. Powell exploding to the rim, play off Powell. Playing a city game, Matty D. You gotta guard him because he stretches the defense out, he gives you spacing. Here he is, Thomas drains the three-pointer from Pembroke. Van Vliet. Sends it now, surge with the three, and he sticks it, bucket and book it. The last 440, here's Van Fleet, the three from Oshawa. You know, there was a there was a point in the game where we really were, we really had control of it. Second quarter, it was like everything was going our way. We were making shots, they were turning it over. We, we were guarding, they were missing shots. I mean, it felt like we were gonna have a, have a, uh, a nice big cushion at the half, and then all of a sudden, I think it was an eight-point lead disappeared pretty quickly. They went on like a 17-3 to run, so it was kind of a, a game of runs like that. Pascal, out of by Tatum, oh, and the 14th turnover. There's Tatum with the left, and a sweet move, and the lead is now at eight. Here's Walker. The foul. They play tired on the back end of that possession. 
Kemba just went right by. And coming out of the timeout, the 17th turnover. Yeah, hanging by a thread right now. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. This is this is dire straits now. Your your season's hanging in a balance right here. For these next few trips, you got to mount it right here. This is smart. Go the other way. And how go. about Lowry with five fouls stepping in and taking the charge? Here's Kyle now getting to the basket. He's got 14. Nice little four-point game. And then I really, really thought uh, we were within striking distance and we were going to pull it off. I just kept saying, somehow we're going to pull this off. Siakam with a rebound. Here comes Norm. Driving on Smart. Gets denied. Under a minute left. I just think we got a couple bad breaks, man, down the stretch. Van Vliet on the take underneath. And it's going to be a foul on Lowry. If it is, it's going to be his sixth. So Lowry fouls out. They missed the two free throws, and that, that rebounding foul was, was tough. Take nothing for granted. This is both, and there's a foul as Tatum goes down hard. What did I just say? Uh, that really kind of put the game away. I mean, we did have a chance to, we did have the ball with a chance to tie it. We weren't able to conjure up a good shot. Fred. Raptors down three. Shot partially blocked. That may do it. You know, we as close as it comes, man. Game seven all the way down to the last possession. So uh, proud of proud of the guys' fight. I don't I don't think we, we were at our best, you know, but we um, you know it's a sign of a great team. You still find a way even when you're you're not at your best and we almost pulled it off. And that is it. The Boston Celtics will advance to take on the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. And the defending NBA champion Toronto Raptors lose in seven games. Yeah, those are tough. I mean, you never, you never uh, let your mind prepare for those, right? You never, you never. You never, like, during the day or the night before or anything, let your mind go there. This could be, you know, the last time you, you, you just you just don't. So when it, when it gets there, you don't really have much prepared or what to say. And, and like you said, all I can tell them really quickly is super proud of you. You guys gave a tremendous effort. Raptors have had an amazing run, a tremendous season, and they brought this to seven games and came up a little bit short. And give credit to your opponent as well, a worthy foe that did a terrific job defensively tonight and just frustrated you the whole night. So the Raptors have nothing to hang their heads about. They've given everybody across Canada a lot of joy and represented a high level. Really a tremendous effort for the year and, and especially considering um, maybe expectations coming off the title, the break, the COVID, startup, 
the restart up, you know, all, all the stuff going on, we just seemed to find a way to keep on playing. So you, you had to be proud of them. Everybody should be proud of that team for the effort they put forth. We felt like we could have won the championship. We really felt like we could have competed to do so. Uh, and there was obvious disappointment, you know, like if you're a competitor, you're going to be disappointed. Listen, there's 29 teams that are going to be disappointed every year, every single year, you know, one way or the other. And um, we, are, we were unfortunately one of them, you know, and comes from, um, a lot of winning, you know, from the last couple of years. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll keep it until you're ready for it. Okay. But yeah, the first emotion is uh, a sting, a sense of hurt, a sense of disappointment. Um, I think you probably immediately go to, you know, all the things, all the hard work, all the sacrifices that the team made to get to that point. Um, and the way I kind of always tell people this, <laughs> You know, taking that bus after a loss or, you know, even that night is the mountain of climbing that for the next season, it seems insurmountable. You know, you seem, how could I, how could I get myself back to the point where like I'm ready to climb this mountain again? And so you, you felt it. We felt it with everybody. And I'm glad we felt it like that because it showed me the spirit. It showed me. Uh, our competitive level, you know, where we are, and, and then it showed me our professional level, you know, we're on to the next task, you know, and the next task is winning again. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm going to be here, though. I'm going to stay here for a little bit. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to stay here. You going to go home? No, I don't know. I'll text you soon. All right, I'll text you. All right, you know. Good What's up, buddy? What's up, guy? You doing okay? Yeah, I enjoyed this year, you know, uh, the emergence of, of Pascal, um, the emergence of Freddie. Um, just being around these guys, um, these young guys. And, you know, now we got a couple of free agents. Now I'm going to be really happy for these guys that going on in the free agency going to get paid. And a guy like Freddie, you know, I know he's worked extremely hard. And, you know, I'm excited for him. You see, I'm just proud of these guys, man. Uh, uh, for me, you know, being 14 years in, um, playing with these young guys, and, and those guys pushing me to be better every single day, and, letting, and those guys letting me lead them. That, that's important for a guy like me. Um, you know, it, it, 14 years is going by so fast. You, you want to cherish every moment. You miss out on these moments that you don't go to championship and you, you miss out on opportunities to play with, you know, to keep continuing to play with these great guys. You know, you, it, it seems insurmountable, but obviously now, you know, with a little bit of time removed, you gain the perspective. Uh, as they say, you know, time heals all. And so now you're, you know, now the challenge is here again, which is how do we, how do we get this team better? Thank you. Thank you. Preparation here is going to meet the opportunity, right? You know, like, and if we're prepared well, meaning we do all our homework, you know, like, and, and figure out all the data and information that we need to gather, you know, and um, there's a focus, and there's a purpose, and there's an honest direction for us, you know, and once, uh, if we can get to that point, I think we're, we won't meet that opportunity that's going to come for us. We, we just have to prepare well. Good evening, and welcome to the 2020 NBA Draft. The draft marks a new beginning for our teams, and it's a new chapter for the next generation of players in search of their NBA dreams. This draft, however, is anything but ordinary. 
seasons cut short, no NCAA tournament or NBA Summer League, not even pickup games in most places. And with opening night fast approaching and less time to prepare, this class of rookies will be challenged more than ever before. So let's get started with this terrific group of young men who are moments away from hearing their names called. You think our two guys are gone? I do, they're solid. You think our two guys will be gone? You think they'll both be there? Their winning percentage turned out to be the best in franchise history as Toronto just continued to find ways to win. They do have some key free agents and Fred Van Fleet and company also are going to have to figure out how to shape that roster as they're about to make their pick 29th overall and just under two minutes left for the Raptors to make that selection. So what's in store for Toronto? I'll go with Malachi. I'm Malachi too. I prefer the player that wants to be great and serious. I think he fits like our culture. I think he's one of the best pick and roll operators out there. And a legit shooter up the middle to play the NBA. Tell them we'll tell them at twenty at fifty-nine. Thirty seconds. Yep, I can hear you. We got it. Thirty seconds left. Okay. We're good? Yeah. We're good? We're good? We're good. Malachi Flint. Good. Malachi Flint. Yep, that's correct. Thank you, Chris. With the 29th pick in the 2020 NBA Draft, the Toronto Raptors select Malachi Flynn from San Diego State University. Man, he's, um, he's, he's cut from the same cloth as so many of the guys that we've had success with, you know. Um, He's he's just one of the the guys that's always kind of looked over, um, underdog story, and you know big time competitor, has put in the work over the last few years to to really you know take his game to another level, and and you know he's he seems to be about the right thing in terms of working to to keep getting better and better every year. Malachi, what's up, man? Masai. I no, appreciate you, man. This is awesome. We're so excited, man. So excited, man. You doing good? We're excited to have you. Everybody's going to say what's up to you here. Malachi, say what's up. Hello, Malachi. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Raptors. They said welcome to the Raptors. All right, well, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk to you. I'll, I'll call you in a little bit, okay? All right, man. Say hi to your family, okay? We can't wait to meet you. All right? All right, man. All right, last last pick. I'll go Harris. Eric, Harris. Jalen Harris. Jalen Harris is a, is a really good scorer, averaged close to 22 points a game. He played a couple years at Louisiana Tech, then transferred to Nevada. Likes to get into your body and, and doesn't shy away from contact and score uh, on the perimeter and can drive to the basket and finish. I'm the uh, general manager for Toronto. How are you doing? <laughs> where, where are you at in the world? Okay, man. Well, welcome, welcome to the Toronto Raptors family, man. We're happy to have you.
tonight, Fred Van Fleet is cashing in, staying right with the Raptors. From undrafted to a key part of a championship and now earning a four-year, $85 million contract. The Raptors are getting a makeover in the front court. First, let's talk about the outgoing bigs, Serge Ibaka and Marc Gasol. A couple of key pieces on that Raptors championship team. Well, first of all, they'll be missed. Uh, these are guys that were big time performers, high character, uh, brought it every night, very professional. Uh, Serge Ibaka was a clutch player for them, had his best years, in my opinion, as a pro in Toronto. And Marcus Gasol was the missing piece to get them over the hump uh, to win their first championship. So uh, they're respected. Uh, they go out with a, a high degree of, of accomplishment in Toronto. Hi, what's up guys? Hi everybody. Uh, I hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Um, I know it's been a little bit of a rush and this has come very kind of um, uh, fast and furious and everybody has been uh, working uh, really, really hard. We find ourselves in Tampa. Um, this is uh, what has worked out best um, for us and um, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's no other way uh, to do it, guys, than to go uh, kick ass like we normally do. We've been put in difficult situations before. Uh, I do know that this has put a lot of stress uh, and on people, um, families. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, I, know, I know that it's not easy for everybody. So many decisions have to be made, you know, like, but um, we know what the last few months have been since March and I just urge everybody, you know, like to be resilient, hang tight. Um, we have your back any way that we possibly can. Michael, the news is now official that the Toronto Raptors will begin the season, at least begin the season in Tampa. Any surprise uh, from you in terms of this announcement? Absolutely, we shouldn't be shocked. I kind of wondered as the days kept rolling by and, and you can imagine the situation the Raptors were in uh, wanting to give not only their players but their staff you know as much notice as possible that they were going to have to relocate but none of, none of this happens in a vacuum and, and as you know cases case counts rise and as you know we're expecting further kind of restrictions and lockdowns potentially the optics of, of uh, making the exception for the Toronto Raptors was probably not in their favor. I'm not shy about telling you guys how much I love being in Toronto. Um, you know, it's our it's our city and it's our team and our organization. So there's there's a lot of unsettling feelings about having to leave. To be honest, um, it's not easy, right? It's not easy to to pick up and leave that behind. It feels strange. And I know I'd rather be in Toronto, but I'm not. And now I'm gonna make the best of it here and I'm gonna not make any excuses and I'm gonna get to work and we're gonna expect to, to play at a super high level. And that's, that's it. Uh, there, there's a lot of things surrounding uh, what's happening and we're gonna do our best to focus in on just becoming the best basketball team we can become. And we do that by starting with, with uh, accepting, here's where we are. Uh, put a smile on our face, get out of the, get out on the right side of the bed, uh, positive attitude, uh, and go to work.